Hello, my name is Thierry Benezesh, Research Director at INRAE. Today, I will provide insights into the hygienic design of a filling machine, as it is crucial for food safety. This tutorial will cover four main parts, an introduction to hygienic design, the Belgium case study within the European Fair Chain project, and in-depth look at the hygienic design of a filling machine and concluding take-home messages. Let us start with an introduction to hygienic design. But first, a few words about my research institute, INRAE. INRAE is a French national research institute that addresses topics at the intersection of agriculture, food and the environment. Relevant topics in this case include the bioeconomy, food and health, and sustainable agricultural and food systems, which are all closely linked together. The primary objective of hygienic design is to prevent potential food safety hazards. Each machine is designed for a specific purpose, with the main goal being that it fulfills its intended use. Additionally, factors such as the manufacturing cost or the safety of the operator are important as well, so compromises may be necessary, provided that these hazards are still effectively controlled. Potential hazards include mechanical risks such as lubricant leaks, material detachment and the release of chemical components. Additionally, there are biological hazards, including the presence of unwanted microorganisms and allergens. The implementation of hygienic design offers several advantages, being the increase of the production time due to less shutdown time for cleaning and disinfection, a decrease in energy demand due to high temperatures and flow rates becoming unnecessary, reduced water and chemical usage due to higher hygiene levels, the decrease of waste and environmental impact due to minimizing the use of water and chemicals and explain by the fact that less fouling needs to be removed. And at last, lower labor costs by reducing the sanitation time. In Europe, hygienic design must comply with European legislation in line with the standards and guides available. According to the European Machine Directive, all equipment used in food handling must be hygienically designed. In other words, hygienic design is mandatory. Certain regulations concerning materials in contact with food stated again that hygienic design is required. However, the specifics are rather limited. Complementary to legal requirements, standards are of great help in helping to determine when something is hygienically designed. Good examples of these are the European Standards EN 1672 Part 1 and Part 2. The European Hygienic Engineering and Design Group is the most experienced organization regarding hygienic design in Europe. They have been working in parallel with the standards committees for over 30 years, issuing over 55 guidelines on hygienic design, cleaning, disinfection and cleaning validation. A notable example is Guidelines Document 8, available for free on the HEDG website. This document covers the fundamentals of hygienic design, including cleanability, contamination prevention, and compatibility with other requirements, such as operator safety. Key topics include the specifications for materials used, such as metals, lubricants, up to the thermal insulation. Additionally, 
it provides comprehensive guidelines on general hygienic design principles, addressing aspects such as surface features, geometry, drainability, up to the integration of equipment in the production line. Now, let's examine hygienic design within the Belgium case study of the Fairchen project. The aim of this project was to develop a smaller septic filling machine that is easy to operate, move around and maintains high hygiene levels. It is designed for packaging liquid and semi-liquid food products, from dairy products to fruit and vegetables with varying food safety requirements. Here is a general view of the result of the project a small filling machine for filling liquid food into pouches. On the left, the external part includes a pouch holder, where pouches are suspended from a support positioned at the entrance of the machine, allowing gradual entry into the aseptic section. The control panel of this side allows the operator to run and monitor the filling machine. In the middle, an enclosed aseptic cabinet is swept by a laminar flow of sterile hair from a filter positioned above. Within this cabinet, pouches are disinfected, filled and capped, then exit by falling out. The caps enter the aseptic cabinet from the right, are manually placed on a rack and push toward the capping area inside the cabinet. These are disinfected as well before entering the aseptic cabinet. Let's delve deeper into the machine and how each part should be hygienically designed. The supports and legs of the equipment meet the hygienic design requirements, including limited amount of supports and cross-pressing. Foot bases should be well sloped and surfaces should be smooth, have a minimum of horizontal features, be free of hedges, crevices, cracks and other imperfections. This to prevent accumulation of dust or other particles. Now we will go over the pooch holder. The rack protects open pouches from potential dust deposition or contaminations. When moving towards the entrance of the cabinet, right before entering the aseptic area, pouches are not protected by the rack anymore and thus prone to airborne contamination. An ideal pouches holder would minimize the presence of horizontal surfaces and eliminate protrusions with metal-to-metal -metal contacts to prevent product accumulation. In case this is not possible, these areas should be regularly inspected after cleaning. To operate the machine, it needs a control panel. Well-designed control panels and maintenance enclosures comprise stainless steel coated mild steel and plastic. The stainless steel is preferred because of its highly hygienic nature and the fact that it can withstand corrosion due to harsh temperature and chemical conditions. In choosing the type of stainless steel, different standards are available. One of the important characteristics, for example, is the surface roughness, which should be below 0.8 micrometer. The control panel features a smooth finish to prevent the ingress and accumulation of product or liquid in or on the enclosure. To operate it, touch screen is the best option. However, the emergency stop should be a button. This is mandatory for safety reasons. All connections, such as conduits and electrical cables, need to enter the cabinets from the bottom side and need to be sealed. Electrical wires are not easy to clean and they should be compatible with the chemicals used for cleaning and disinfection. 
The aseptic cabinet comprises three parts. The first part disinfects and dries the pouches as they enter the cabinet and sterile. The disinfected pouches then proceed to the second part where they are filled with a food product. In the third part, the filled pouches are capped and ejected from the aseptic cabinet. Some aspects of the aseptic cabinet will be detailed. It is important to consider how the internal design should be structured for optimal hygiene and in which cases compromises are allowed or required. Generally, edges and horizontal surfaces should be avoided as much as possible. The lower section of the cabinet, for example, is inclined, well drained and easy to clean, allowing for the removal of any food spills and residues. An optimal hygienic design for the doors should be considered as well. They are made of glass and can be open over 90 degrees outwards so that the machine is safe and easy to operate. It should have a minimal number of locks and they should be made from stainless steel. Any gaps around the doors should be avoided, for example with rubber seals. The filling area, being the most crucial zone, is protected from airborne contamination by the laminar sterile airflow. However, there are no actual barriers separating it from other areas with unsterile components like pouches and caps. Implementing a high care zone can reduce the obligatory sterile area, thereby limiting the risk of contamination during filling and limiting the area where product spills can occur to the filling area only. Next, let's discuss several aspects that are required to ensure proper cleaning of the aseptic cabinet. First, complexity and hard to reach zones should be avoided as they decrease the ease of cleaning as seen by the area behind the infection unit. Dead or hollow areas are difficult to clean and likely to accumulate dirt and bacteria, if unavoidable. For example, in the case of cables entering the cabinet, they should be enclosed, hermetically sealed. Another crucial aspect is designing the connections between certain parts for which we should consider the usage of bolts and nuts as well as welding. Improper design can result in accumulation of debris in crevices or on protrusions which can serve as nutrients for microbial biofilm growth. Exposed bulk ants and nuts are problematic for several reasons. For example, metal-to-metal -metal contact promotes corrosion and exposed threads and crevices between parts are difficult to clean and therefore may harbor dirt and bacteria. Ideally, use welding instead of bolts and nuts However, if welding is not possible, it is advised to use domed bolts or nuts. Cut the exposed thread to the correct length and avoid any crevices and metal-to-metal -metal contact by using elastomer gasket seals. In case welding is possible, it should be continuous, avoiding ridges and cracks which could lead to the accumulation of particles between the welded parts. As was stated earlier, sometimes compromises should be made between hygienic design and functionality or cost. First, the use of a clamp connection is not considered the most hygienic option, but it is not forbidden. A better alternative would have been a SMS fitting used in applications which required extremely high levels of hygiene. Secondly, while it is generally advised to avoid horizontal surfaces, in this case, the horizontal surfaces of the stainless steel guide for poach entry 
into the aseptic chamber were retained due to their functionality. Of course, cleaning and infection operations are equally essential. For the closed product circuits, CAP or cleaning in place is required, while for most of the other surfaces being open, different options could be advised, including COP or cleaning out of place, in which small parts could be dismantled and cleaned as well. Another option is to just manual clean everything, especially here in case of the aseptic cabinet. At last, cleaning with foam followed by rinsing is also a possible method. But in any case, disinfection is essential and mandatory. There are several critical points to bear in mind. Design complexity can jeopardize the ease of cleaning and disinfection. Cleaning of electric connections should be done with careful considerations. The use of chemicals, temperature and contact time compatible with the material of the wires should be documented. Residual cleaning liquid could remain on horizontal surfaces and should therefore be removed. The use of a pressure hose should be avoided. Instead, use foam cleaning and gentle rinsing possibly followed by drying. Finally, some take-home messages. To summarize, the following should be remembered. Pay attention to accessibility for cleaning. Avoid dead spaces, as well as crevices, protrusions and recesses. Use continuous welding as much as possible. Ensure electrical wires are compatible with the cleaning and disinfection method. And finally, avoid horizontal surfaces. Combining hygienic design with a septic filling shows that contamination is challenging to avoid and is heavily influenced by the design of the machine and the used materials. The high care aseptic filling zone must be well designed to prevent any contamination and to protect it from external elements such as dust, aerosols and so on. Proper hygienic design leads to less trapping of contamination, easier cleaning, efficient disinfection, which offers potencies to reduce the cost and environmental impacts of cleaning and disinfection. With this tutorial, we hope that you have gained more insights into hygienic design and that you are excited about the newly developed food packaging systems within the Belgium case fair offer chain. Thank you for your attention.